because you have no idea the world they, they live in. You know, and I, and I don't claim to know because I went to high school in the good old days in the 90s. And those were pretty bad, but they were the good old days compared to what is there now. It's really bad now. And I, you know, I, I know some of the stuff, and even then my ears start getting red. And I said, man, I'm going to have teen my girls are going to be teenagers in a decade. What am I going to do? You know? So now, having said all of that, you know, yes, the problems are different. Your parents don't understand. But the fact that shaitan is calling you to them hasn't changed. He was making people, he was deceiving young people <laughs> thousands of years ago. And he's deceiving young people now. Yes, the temptations are different. The technology is different. The access is different. But the game is the same. He wants, you, he wants to land you in hellfire. He wants to have you lose your decency. That's all it is. That's all the game is. So now shaitan will prove to be a khadul to you. Probably already in this life, you will fall into his traps. And then you'll say never again, and then fall again. And then say never again, and then fall again. But really, you'll realize he's khadul when we see him, uh, you know, on the day of judgment, when the people who followed him, may Allah not make us from them, they will be cursing him and saying, man, we should beat this guy up. He's the one who talked me into all this stuff. He'll say, you know what? Let's just burn now, okay? We're all here together. Can't do anything about it now. If you really had a case, you wouldn't have been here. So let's just relax, okay? Let's just enjoy the flames. So that's, you know, basically, the, in a nutshell, that's the dialogue that occurs in the Quran. What are you whining about now? When you had a chance to walk away, you didn't. So don't blame me, right? Don't blame the salesman. You, you signed the contract and you bought the car. You can't blame the salesman. You, you should have done your own homework. So this is khadu. This is the second kind of friend. What was the first kind of friend again? I forgot. Kareem, thanks. Okay. So here's the third kind of friend. Now we talk about hopefully better friends, inshallah. Uh, the first good friend is Rafiq. Rafiq. Rafiq comes in Arabic from the word mirfaq. Right? Mirfaq is literally a pillow, something you recline on or you relax on when you're exhausted. A rafiq is a kind of friend you can count on. A rafiq is a kind of friend you can turn to when you are in the hour of need. The rafiq is the kind of friend whose advice is going to benefit you. It is going to be a source of actual comfort for you. Not deceiving comfort, but actual comfort for you. So who is your rafiq? Allah Azza wa in the Quran, He gave us a very explicit definition of who a rafaqa are. Who, who is going to be rafiq for you, that kind of friend. Allah says, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ and whoever was to obey Allah and the Messenger وسلم, then those are from those who Allah, they, are, they belong to the group that Allah showered His favors upon. From the Prophets we'll talk about who these people are. For now we'll just say the relentless confirmers of truth. And those who bear witness. والصالحين and the righteous وحسن أولئك رفيقا and how awesome these people are those are as far as being a رفيق so who are your reliable friends who are your reliable friends in other words رفيق the prophets عليهم الصلاة والسلام well they've passed away عليهم الصلاة والسلام with the exception of one who hasn't died which one hasn't died please have it okay good so we're clear on that and the second الصديقين those who relentlessly confirm the truth and they're even around today Okay, those who confirm the truth. Then as shuhada, those who bear witness, and this means those who bear witness with their speech to the truth, those who bear witness with their character to the truth. Right? These are people that live Islam and not, are not afraid to show it. They live Islam. And the ultimate of those are the martyrs, but it's not limited to them. And as salihin, the righteous people, people that do good things. These are the people that you can depend on. Now you have friends that are messed up. Yo, Brother Numa, I got these friends, man, they're messed up, bro. They do some really bad things, I can't even tell you, man. You, you won't even understand. Yes, I know, you have really messed up friends. Congratulations. If I had a cookie, I'd give you, okay? Now, the thing is, the thing to boast about isn't how messed up friends you have, but where are your good friends? You know, the measure of friendship is, is this person better than me in character or worse? Is my company around them making me a better person or a worse person? That's a good measure of whether, you're, whether or not you should be friends with these people. If they're making your language worse, your respect for elders worse, the way you spend your time is getting worse, then they're probably not good friends. They're probably not Rafiq. What are they? They're probably Qadim. Or even Khadud, right? The other kind of friend. So you need to kind of gauge the, who are the people around me that are doing better deeds than I am. That, are, that live Islam, that live, you know, they actually live a life, you know, not giving in to temptation. They live, they live for a higher purpose. 
And you know what? One of the things that I should share with you is those kinds of friends, you shouldn't be limiting yourself as far as the age. Some of my best friends, when I was uh, 18, 19, some of my best friends were 72, 73. Older people. Why? Because they're, they're wise, man. They're wise. They'll give you advice that no other friend your age will be able to give you. You'll talk to your friends your age about your problems, they'll say, yeah, I understand. <laughs> they don't understand squat. <laughs> They don't even understand what they're going through. How are they going to help you understand? But you speak to older people, you speak to people of wisdom, and they'll actually give you valuable advice. You can recline on them almost. You can lean on them for, for wisdom, right? So it's not, and I'm not asking you to go out and make friends with 80-year-olds. But what I am asking is, don't limit yourself, well, this person's just, you know, how can this uncle be my friend? Or how can my grandmother be my friend? No, no, no. The elders have incredible wisdom to offer, and their friendship one of the things that it does for younger people is it gives them maturity. When you hang about around people your age too much, and you don't spend any time with people that are older than you, then what happens is you become very immature. You become very, very immature. This, this, ha this ends up happening. So even for the older uh, kids here, you know, I, you're not really kids if you're 18, 19, but if you only hang out around 18, 19 year olds, you're going to act like 14 year olds. You're not going to act your age. But when you, you spend time with people that are older, you, that kind of rubs off on you, and you become a little bit more mature. So one of the things you can do is you know, try to spend time with company that is a little bit older than you. The other thing that's a deception in our society is this idea, oh, they're just kids. You know, that's, that's please turn the cell phone off or talk to her. Because, you know, <laughs> she's been calling. It must be important. Anyway, so here's the thing. The, the, the kinds of, you know, the, the, the notion that teenagers are just kids. <coughs> oh, they're just kids, they're just having a good time, that kind of thing, right? You know, we act according to what we believe we are. In Islam, as soon as you hit puberty, you're an adult. You're an adult. You're not treated any different, oh, come on, he's just 14. Yeah, he committed triple homicide, but he's just 14. No, 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 he's... Just like any other one who can, he's an adult. He'll be tried like an adult. That's the law. That's Islam. In other words, when you turn a certain age, there are certain adult expectations from you. If prayer is binding upon you at an adult age, it's binding upon you when you're a certain age, when you hit puberty. That's it. You have to pray. You have to be responsible. You can't goof around. You can't do certain things that you could have done when you were a kid. Right? So you ha doesn't matter what the society thinks of you as. The society may say, even when you're 22, oh, they're just kids, they're having fun on campus, right? They're just, you know, they're partying, but come on, when are you going to live it up, you know? So you kids, you have such a great time, et cetera, et cetera. But as far, if you, if you want to know what Allah thinks of you, what the messenger standards for you are, what this deen standardizes you as, you're an adult the moment you hit puberty, so you're responsible. So don't behind that shelter, don't hide behind that shelter on the day of judgment before Allah saying, oh Allah, I was 19, but I was just a kid. It's not going to fly. That's not going to fly at all. By the way, he's really cute. So if you, if you want to be distracted, that's a fair distraction. <laughs> OK. So we got a few kinds of friends so far. I'm going to give you a whole list of different kinds of friends and the benefits of knowing uh, these different kinds of friends. The next kind of friend is a wali. A wali. OK, the Arabic word wali. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاءَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ A wali is a specifically a protective friend. A friend who is there, not just as a friend, but they're actually there to watch your back. Okay? They've got you when you're in trouble. Okay? And they're, they're there to protect you. So you, know, you, you, would, you would have their company especially when you know there's a danger on you. Right? Who are these people that you can rely on? Allah says your first wali is Allah. Your first protective friend is Allah. Your second protective friend is His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What that means for us today is holding on to His legacy, holding on to His sunnah is a means of protecting us. It is a means of protection. Like I tell you for a young man, to grow a beard is a big challenge, right? Because you feel like you look so pretty without it. And you stare at yourself in the mirror 45 minutes before you come out. But then if your beard's coming out all scruffy, it kind of grows here, but doesn't grow here. And it's all weird looking. So you say, what am I going to follow this sunnah for? But once you do, you know it protects you from so many different kinds of problems. It protects you from so many fitan that would have been, you would have been afflicted with just by holding on to the sunnah of the messenger. It's a means of protection. The sunnah of the messenger to walk with humility. 
The Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, to lower his gaze Ali والسلام, When he walked, he walked at this angle So when the eyes don't meet, there's no future problems There's no, there's none of that They never meet, you know The, the, the thought never crosses your mind So there, you know, even the Sunnah of the Messenger is a means of protection May Allah give us knowledge of the Sunnah and commitment to the Sunnah then he says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And of course, your wadi, 